Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank God for you logging on tonight. We have the Bible study, New Beginnings Community Church. Thank God for those that are present. Here, yeah, another uh, message or a class, a word from our Lord and Savior. We thank God to have a mind to be present on tonight. Mm -hmm. He gathered, he said, where two or three are gathered in his name, in Jesus' name, that he would be in the midst. Yes. So we thank God for his presence on tonight. We thank God for you logging on. We thank God for your views. Continue to view us. If you have any questions about the lessons, you can always give us an email at NBC for Church at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Tonight we have another lesson by the help of the Lord uh, entitled Joint Heirs Shared Inheritance. We're talking about uh, being made joint heirs and we're thanking God for the eternal inheritance that we have. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get into it uh, but before we do, let us bow for a word of prayer. The gracious Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we just come tonight thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. Thank you, Lord God, for all that you have provided. Lord God, we thank you for your salvation. Thank you for the blood that you shed. Thank you for the comfort of your spirit in our hearts and our minds. We just thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice you have in your body, and we just ask that you would continue to be the Lord of our lives, continue to give us your mercy and your grace, and we'll glorify you and we'll praise you. And it's in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Tonight we're going to deal with being joint heirs and the fact that we have a shared inheritance. Mm -hmm. And so we want to encourage you tonight uh, to remember, we just want to break, keep keep it in your remembrance, what we have, and that is, we have an inheritance. We have an inheritance. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can't, we can't become weary in well-doing. We got to remember that uh, our inheritance, our blessing is uh, eternal. So if we are disappointed or become overwhelmed with this life. One scripture says, if we only hope in Christ for this life, then we all men most miserable. We have to have hope in Christ beyond this life. Mm -hmm. Because this life we are subject we're subject to the to the world, to the elements we're, we're subject. But in our once we get our eternal inheritance This uh, suffering that we're going through now, the Bible calls it for the light affliction. It's, it, it's the light affliction now mm -hmm. that we're going through. And so we're going to get into it a little bit. We think we want to, we want to thank God for, uh, for Jesus Christ. We want to mm -hmm. thank him because uh, it's because of Jesus that we have this eternal inheritance. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, we want to continue to encourage you to look to the Lord, look to the Lord. And so tonight we're going to start, we're going to deal, our focus is uh, Romans, the eighth chapter, a uh, very popular chapter, Romans, the eighth chapter, verse 16 and verse 17. You know, I've been reading from the King James, so you follow along in the version that you read from. 16th verse says, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. This is what we want to focus on tonight. This is the promise. This is the promise of God's word that we have tonight. And we want to go through uh, this verse slow. 
It says that uh, we are heirs of God. We're heirs of God. And that makes us joint heirs with Christ. He said, if so be that we suffer with him, suffer with Christ, that we may be also glorified together. Now, don't panic and close your Bible with that word suffer. Because understanding the text, that word suffer suggests to us endure. Now, if we read it, if we read that last sentence again and, and replace suffer with endure, then it makes sense. If so be that we endure with him, that we may be also glorified together. So you understand, if we suffer with Christ, we'll be glorified together with Christ. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if we endure, if we endure, and what we're going to learn is that enduring is waiting on the Father's appointed time. Mm -hmm. If we endure with him, then the promise of God says we'll be glorified together. So you have to understand that uh, we, you, we, you can't give up. You can't give up because we are heirs of God. We're children of God, joint heirs of Christ, and we have to endure. We have to suffer in order to be glorified together, in order to, uh, to receive this inheritance, this eternal inheritance. And so inher inheritance suggests to us legal transmission of property after death, allotment, possession, portion, the reception of genetic qualities by transmission from parent to offspring, a valuable possession that is a common heritage from nature. That's inheritance. And joint heirs suggest to us participant in common, a person who inherits jointly with another heir or other heirs is a joint heir. So that's what we're dealing with tonight. Mm -hmm. And we want to pay close attention to the description in inheritance where it says the reception of genetic qualities by transmission from parent to offspring. And it's very, very, so very important to understand that this is why we are heirs of God. Because of the genetic quality that makes us heirs of God. To break it down in the natural, you take a newborn child, a newborn baby that has no say-so, has no say-so, but he's born or she's born into a wealthy family. Mm -hmm. And eventually will inherit the, uh, the wealth or the riches. Mm -hmm. And so they were born into that. The child, male or female, didn't do anything. They were just born into that situation. Mm -hmm. So the understanding is that you, you're not going to work for your inheritance. I'm going to slow down because I know some of us, we're working hard for our inheritance. <laughs> the Bible lets us know that if you work, then it's not of grace, it's of debt. Study it, look into it. If it's, if it's by your works, then it's, then it's not of grace, it's of debt. Because works is of the law. And inheritance and, and eternal salvation is of grace, is of faith. So if you're working for it, 
then uh, that's not grace, that's debt. And so we, we don't want to be confused. We want to understand 16th verse says, the spirit bears witness without spirit that we are children of God. The spirit, the Holy Ghost that dwelleth inside of you and I bears witness with, with God that we are children, that we are heirs of God. It's not work. Don't get it twisted. We're born into royalty. When we when we were baptized in Jesus' name, first of all, when we repented of our sins and we were baptized in Jesus' name and we were filled with the Holy Ghost, Amen. the Spirit bear witness that we were children of God, heirs of God at that point, heirs of God at that point, joint heirs with Christ. He said, and you were children of God, he said, and if children, then heirs. So if we're children, if we're a child of God, then we are heir Amen. of God. And joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we endure with him, that we may be also glorified together, that we may be, that we may also receive or come into our eternal heritage. Mm -hmm. It's what we're dealing with. And so it is time to, to be excited because uh, by the grace of God, you can be an heir and a joint heir with Christ because the Spirit of God leads us to repentance. You can repent and you can be born into the family of God. And then you can become an heir of God or a child of God and become a joint heir with Christ. So we excited about that because God so loved the world yes. he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life right. and so let's move on a little further but understand our motivation tonight in, in that word inheritance the description that we are highlighting is the reception of genetic quality this is what makes you an heir, mm -hmm. your genetic quality. In other words, you have to have, you have to be born again of the water and the spirit. You have to have the Holy Ghost in order to have that genetic quality. Like I said, it's not by works. If, it is, if it's by works, then it's of debt. And that's not how we're saved. We're saved by grace. Let's go a little further. All right. Hebrews 9. Chapter 9, verse 15 says, And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, there it is, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Amen. Now let's go over to the ninth chapter of the book of Hebrews. And so we can understand that a little, a little more, a little better. We'll read the 15th verse again for this cause. He is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Verse 16. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death, the death of the testament. 17 say, for a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the test of living. You have to understand. We thank God for the death of the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ died, the, 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 the 16th verse says, because, I mean, uh, the 15th verse says, because he, he died for the transgressions that were under the first testament, Amen. he redeemed us. 
And at the beginning of the verse, it said, and for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Jesus Christ is the mediator of the New Testament. Now you have to understand that the Testament is only of force or only of, it's only valid after the tester have died. So he had to die. You have to understand, Jesus lived a holy life. Yeah, he lived a holy life. Wow, he had no sin. Wow, we know that. But check this out. You have to understand, if he would have just kept living and kept living and kept living and kept living, where would we be? You have to understand it was because the death. A testament is only enforced after the death of the testament. So if he would have just kept living and kept living and kept living, we would have never been redeemed. He would have just lived a holy life. We would have never been redeemed. But because he died, because it because it because you have to die, you have to die. Have to die mm -hmm. in order for the testament to be of a, a force or valid. Mm -hmm. So he died. The 15th verse said, and for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament. He is the mediator. He had to die by that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Mm -hmm. Now, we just studied last lesson that many are called. We're all called. And we're all called by the death, the burial, because of the death, burial, and resurrection Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're called because of the death of the testament, because of Jesus being the mediator of the New Testament, of the New Covenant, Mm -hmm. So all of us that were called might receive. The scriptures say might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Mm -hmm. We learned last lesson what that might mean because everybody's not going to repent. That's what might mean. But we're called. We are called to be heirs of God. You were called to be an heir of God. Yes. You must repent and be baptized in water for the remission of your sins and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Because go back up to the description, it's the reception of genetic quality mm -hmm. that makes you err. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not it's not a work. Like I said, Jesus lived a holy life. I know we I know we live a holy life, so forth and on. But understand, if he would have just kept living that holy life, we would have never been redeemed. Amen. So it had to take the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ yes. in order for us to in order for us to have a chance that we might, the scriptures say, receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Let's go a little further. Mm -hmm. In the book of Acts, 26, chapter, verse 18. It says to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Nowhere in here is he talking about my works and your works. That is not what makes us an heir of God. That is not what makes us a child of God. It said, this, the latter part of the verse said that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. The Lord talking, this is God talking. Mm -hmm. Go back up to your description and understand the reception of genetic Qualities is what make you and I an heir. The, the, you take a child we describe in the natural 
take a newborn child and born into wealth. And the child didn't have anything to do with that. He was born into it. But after the father or the parents pass on, then they receive the inheritance. That's where the suffering come in. From birth to the reception. You have to endure. You have to do, you have to endure. That child, we're talking in the natural, that child that's born in that natural family has to endure a life until the death of the tester, to the death of the parent, before they can receive the inheritance. Spiritually speaking, you and I, after we're born again, we have to suffer. We have to endure this life until we cross over. Amen. Until we're glorified together with Christ. Be patient. We have to suffer. We have to endure. You have to understand this is Christ being the mediator of the New Testament, the New Covenant, he's already established. Now, in the natural, sometimes you get uh, children that off their parents to try to rush that inheritance. But a lot of times they don't get it because you can't obtain it that way. Amen. So you have to endure. We can't rush God. Right. You can't kill God in your life and think you're going to uh, still have the eternal inheritance because Christ is the mediator. Jesus died. And so when you have a, a, a will and testament and it's written, guess what? <laughs> it has to be fulfilled or manifested that way. Jesus being the mediator of the New Testament, Amen. the last will and testament, and the way it is written is the way it's going to be. Moving on, moving on. Where are we going now? You know, we're going to go to Galatians. We're going to go to Galatians. Mm -hmm. we got a, a few places in Galatians we want to go to. Uh, you know, I, uh, I take that back. I want to go to Genesis 21. And I didn't even put it on my worksheet. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You brought it to me. Genesis 21. I believe I meant to put it on there, <laughs> but I didn't. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Genesis 21. Got to hurry because I can't keep you all night. Genesis 21 and verse 10. Genesis 21 and verse 10. And it reads as such. Wherefore, she said unto Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. <laughs> you know the story. You know that story. Yeah. You hear, you hear her say, this, the son of this bondwoman won't be heir with my son Isaac. Right. Because she understands the reception of genetic qualities. That was Abraham's son, true enough. That was Abraham's son, true enough. But the issue is, the problem was, that wasn't Abraham's promised son. You have to understand that son was by a bond woman. Or in other words, that son was by the flesh. Now, uh... <clears throat> That son was according to the flesh. Now let's go back 
to Galatians. Let's go back to Galatians. And we're going to talk about what this flesh do. We're going to try to bring light to this flesh. Those of us that like to pamper our flesh. I got some news hot off the press for you tonight. Uh, Galatians chapter 4 and verse 29 and 30. It says, but as, but as then, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. <clears throat> Even so it is now. Nevertheless, what says the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. Mm -hmm. right. Your flesh. <laughs> your flesh. You know what your flesh does? Mm -hmm. <laughs> your flesh persecutes you. You know, if you go back in the book of Genesis and you read into that story, you know what Ishmael was doing to Isaac? Oh, he was mocking him. Mm -hmm. You know what your flesh does to you? It mocks you. Oh, your right. flesh mocks you. It don't want you to understand that you were born of the free woman. It's It's... You're not born of the bomb woman. Mm. You cannot work to get salvation. You have to understand your flesh is mocking you. Mm -hmm. You can't work to get salvation. We're saved by grace. Ah. When we were born again, we, we became heirs of God. And so as the will, the last will of the testament is written, that's how we have to live it out. Nothing we do will qualify us to be an heir. Understand the description says the reception of genetic qualities. So as it is written out, that's how we have to live it mm -hmm. in order to receive the inheritance because that's the way a will is written. And it has to be enforced. Your flesh is mocking you uh, and me because it wants us to uh, give in to it. It wants us to, to, that's right, give in to the flesh. It wants us to think that the flesh, that, that in the flesh we are somebody or something or whatever. Isaac, I mean, Ishmael was mocking Isaac because true enough, he was Abraham's son. True enough, he was born first. It's mocking him. True enough, he was older. And true enough, he should have had uh, the birthrights or whatever, 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 whatever. So it's mocking him. It's mo he's mocking him, persecuting him. So the only problem is Ishmael was not the promise of God. No. Isaac was. So you have to understand the way the uh, will of testament is written is the way it's going to be fulfilled. All right. That flesh, that flesh is a mocker. The Bible say that the carnal mind is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. It cannot be. Because your flesh and my flesh is enmity to God. It opposes God. It will never, ever, if 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 we could live forever in this body, <laughs> on this earth, your flesh and my flesh will never agree with God. No. It's a mocker. It's a mocker. <sighs> That's why you can't give in a little. <laughs> Woo, you have to understand. Right. You can't give in a little. This is why, uh, yeah, we're going to move off of that. Get the picture. Uh, where are we at? Galatians 4.29. Galatians 
Let's back up in Galatians. And I'm going to soon let you go. Uh, in the worksheet, it says Galatians 4, 1 through 7. Mm -hmm. We're going to read 7 first because that's the main scripture. Galatians 4 and verse 7 says, Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Wherefore thou art no more a what? A servant. A servant. But a son. And if a son, then an heir of God. There it is again. Through Christ, not through your works or my works. Amen. It's through Christ. Because, once again, the testament is only a force after the testament is dead. He died for your transgressions. He died for my transgressions. Therefore, he is the mediator of the New Testament, the New Covenant. And it's by him that we are heirs of God. Verse 1, fourth chapter, the fourth chapter of Galatians, verse 1. We're going to read with understanding. He said, now I, Paul's writing, he said, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Understand that a child differs nothing from a servant, although he's the Lord of all. But it's under tutor and governance until the time appointed of the Father. Mm -hmm. Even so we, when we were children, were in abundance under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, I'm a father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Mm -hmm. After the appointed time, the, the, the text said, now, although we were heir, now we kind of explained that in the natural earlier, that a child, a child, he's under, he's under guardianship, he's under stewards, he's under babysitters, he's got rules, he's got laws, he's got all this, as long as he's a child. Although he's going to be heir, although he's going to be heir, as a, as a child, he's still under tutors and governors. Mm -hmm. Until, the Bible say, until the appointed time of the Father. Now, when you take that spiritually, that deals with the uh, transformation from the law to grace. Right. At the appointed time, you understand Christ came on the scene and took us from under the law and brought us under grace. The law symbolizes uh, a servant because they had to work. Uh, I wish I had the time. The law symbolizes that when they use that word servant, that symbolizes the law because under the law, you, you had to work. It was debt. But in the fullness of time, when Christ came and redeemed us from the law, it's no longer debt, it's grace. Mm -hmm. We're no longer, uh, I think it's 3 and 28, 29, 26, 27, 29, say we're no longer under the schoolmaster. We're no longer under the law. We're no longer under the schoolmaster. They said we were shut up to faith. We were governed by the schoolmaster. 
But now that faith is here, we're no longer under the schoolmaster. That deals with the transformation from being taken out of the law and, and brought into grace by Jesus Christ. And so you keep working for it if you want to. <laughs> You're in the wrong dispensation. Amen. You got to follow the written word. You got to follow the written word. The last will and testament is you will receive what you your inheritance according to the written word. Uh -huh. Love your neighbor. That's the word. Love your enemy. That's the word. That's the word. Repent of your sins. Be baptized in Jesus' name. And be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the word. And live a life according to the written word of God. We pray that you get something out of it. Remember that God wants to make you and I an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. We always encourage you to be born again of the water and the spirit, to be born into the family of God. That's to repent and be baptized in Jesus' name and to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Before I let you go, let us pray. Bow heads. To the gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord God, we just come tonight thanking you once again for the visitation of your spirit, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you for all that you have provided for the gift of eternal life, Lord God. We thank you for your spirit that comforts us, Lord, until you return to take us, Lord God, with you. We ask that you bless those out there that view it and may be viewing, Lord God. We pray that you bless those that are present, new, new beginnings, Lord. You know what we have need of. We ask, Lord God, that you would do it according to thine will. And we praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.